Hello, we're back again for our evening story and we're going to continue with The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. And today we are going to look at our story called The Open Road. It's all about a rather naughty little toad, but I'll let you find out just how naughty he is as we read on. One bright summer morning, the rat was sitting on the riverbank, singing a little song that he had just composed. Ratty, said the mole suddenly, I want to ask you a favour. Won't you take me to call on Mr Toad? I've heard so much about him, and I do so want to make his acquaintance. Why, certainly, said the good-natured rat. Get the boat out, and we'll paddle up there at once. It's never the wrong time to call on Toad. Early or late, he's always glad to see you. He must be a very nice animal, observed the mole as he got into the boat. He is indeed the best of animals, replied Rat. So good-natured and affectionate. Perhaps he's not very clever. We can't all be geniuses. And it may be that he's both boastful and conceited. But he has, a, has got some great qualities, has Toady. Rounding a bend in the river, they came in sight of a handsome old house with well-kept lawns reaching down to the water's edge. There's Toad Hall, said Rat. Can you see it? There's a lovely picture of it there as they arrive. That's Toad Hall. Very grand. Rounding a bend in the river, they came in sight of a handsome old house with a well-kept lawn reaching down to the water's edge. There's Toad Hall, said the Rat. Toad is rather rich, you know, and this is really one of the nicest houses in these parts, though we never admit as much to Toad. They disembarked as they got out and strolled across the flower-decked lawns in search of Toad, whom they found resting in a wicker garden chair with a preoccupied expression on his face and a large map spread out on his knees. There he is. Hooray, he cried, jumping up on, upon seeing them. This is splendid. He shook the paws of both of them warmly, never waiting for an introduction to the mole. You don't know how lucky it is you're turning up just now. <clears throat> Let's sit quiet a bit today, said the rat, throwing himself into an easy chair, while the mole took another by the side of him and made some civil remark about Toad's delightful residence. Finest house on the whole river, cried Toad boisterously, or anywhere else for that matter. He could not help adding that. Here, the rat nudged the mole. The toad saw him do it and turned very red. Then Toad burst out laughing. All right, ratty, he said. It's only my way, you know. Now, look here. You've got to help me. It's most important. <clears throat> it's about your rowing, I suppose, said the rat with an innocent air. You're getting on fairly well, though you splash a good bit still. Oh, pooh, boating, interrupted the toad in great disgust. I've given that up long ago. No, I've discovered the real thing, the only genuine occupation for a lifetime. I propose to devote the remainder of mine to it. Come with me, dear Ratty, and your friend also, and you shall see what you shall see. He led the way to the stable yard, and there, drawn out of the coach house, they saw a gypsy caravan, shining with newness, painted a canary yellow, picked out with green and red wheels. There it is, a bit like a shepherd's hut. There you are, cried the toad, straddling and expanding himself. There's a real life for you, the open road, the dusty highway. Here today, up and off to somewhere else tomorrow. Travel, change, interest, excitement, the whole world before you. And mind, this is the finest cart of its sort that was ever built. Come inside and look at the arrangements. Planned them all myself, I did. It was indeed very compact and comfortable. The mole was tremendously excited and followed them eagerly up the steps. The rat only snorted. All complete, said the toad triumphantly. You see, everything you can possibly want. Letter paper, bacon, jam, cards and dominoes. You'll find, as they descended the steps again, that nothing whatever has been forgotten when we make our start this afternoon. I beg your pardon? But I said the rat, but did I overhear you say something about we start this afternoon? Now, dear good old ratty, said the toad imploringly, you know you've got to come. I can't possibly manage without you. I want to show you the world. 
I don't care, said the rat. I'm not coming, and that's flat. And Mole's going to do as I do, aren't you, Mole? Of course I am, said the Mole loyally. All the same, it does sound as if it might have been rather fun. Poor Mole, he had fallen in love with the canary-coloured cart and all its little fitments. The rat wavered. Come and have some lunch, said Toad, and we'll talk it over. During lunch, the Toad painted the prospects of the trip and the joys of the open life and the roadside in such glowing colours that the Mole could hardly sit in his chair for excitement. Somehow, it soon seemed taken for granted by all three of them that the trip was a settled thing, and the Rat allowed his good nature to override his personal objections. He could not bear to disappoint his two friends. When they were quite ready, the now triumphant Toad led his companions to the paddock and set them to capture the old grey horse, who had been told off by Toad for the dustiest job in this dusty expedition. He frankly preferred the paddock and took a deal of catching. At last, the horse was caught and harnessed and they set off all talking at once. It was a golden afternoon. Good-natured wayfarers stopped to say nice things about their beautiful cart and rabbits held up their forepaws and said, Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! Late in the evening, tired and happy and miles from home, they drew up on a remote common and they ate a simple supper sitting on the grass by the side of the cart. After so much open air and excitement, the toad slept very soundly and no amount of shaking could rouse him out of bed the next morning. So the mole and rat turned to and the hard work had all been done by the time Toad appeared on the scene, remarking what a pleasant, easy life it was they were all leading now. Their way lay across country by narrow lanes and it was not till the afternoon that they came out on the high road. This is when their disaster sprang out on them. They were strolling along the high road when far behind them they heard a faint warning hum, like the sound of a distant bee. Glancing back, they saw a small cloud of dust advancing on them at incredible speed, while from out of the dust a faint boop boop wailed. In an instant, the peaceful scene was changed, and with a blast of wind and a whirl of sound that made them jump for the nearest ditch, it was on them. The boop boop rang in their ears, a magnificent motor car possessed all earth and air for the fraction of a second, flung an enveloping cloud of dust that blinded and wrapped them utterly, and then dwindled to a speck in the far distance. Look at that very old person's car. But in those days, they were very excited about that car. And that was the boop boop of the horn. The old grey horse, dreaming as he plodded along of his quiet paddock, reared and plunged and drove the cart backwards towards the deep ditch at the side of the road. There was a heart-rending crash and the canary-coloured cart, their pride and their joy, lay on its side in the ditch, an irredeemable wreck. <gasps> the rat danced up and down in the road. You villains, he shouted, shaking both fists. You road hogs! I'll have the law on you. Toad sat down in the middle of the dusty road, his legs stretched out before him, and stared in the direction of the disappearing motor car. Yeah, look what's happened. His face wore a satisfied expression, and at intervals he faintly murmured, Boop, boop, hmm. boop, boop. The mole went to look at the cart on its side in the ditch. It was indeed a sorry sight. The rat came to help him, but their united efforts were not enough to right the cart. Hi, Toad, they cried. Come and bear a hand, can't you? Toad never answered a word or buzzed from his seat in the road. Glorious, stirring sight, he murmured. The real way to travel. Oh, bliss. Boop, boop. Oh my, oh my, and to think that I never knew. But now, what dust clouds shall spring up behind me as I speed on my reckless way? What are we to do with him? asked the mole. Nothing at all, replied the rat firmly. 
he has now got a new craze and it always takes him that way in its first stage. Come on, he said. It's five or six miles to the nearest town and we shall just have to walk. Now look here, Toad. You'll have to go straight to the police station and lodge a complaint and then arrange for the cart to be mended. Police station? Complaint? murmured Toad. Me? Complain? Of that beautiful heavenly vision? Mend the cart? I've done with carts forever. I never want to see the cart or to hear of it again. The rat turned from him in despair. He's quite hopeless, he said to the mole. On reaching the town, they went straight to the railway station. Eventually, a slow train landed them at the station, not far from Toad Hall. They escorted the spellbound, sleepwalking Toad to his door and put him to bed. Then they got out their boat and they sculled down the river back home. The following evening, the mole was sitting on the bank, fishing, when the rat came strolling along to find him. Heard the news, he said. There's nothing else being talked about all along the river bank. Toad went up to town by an early train this morning, and he has ordered a large and very expensive motor car. So let's find out what Toad gets up to with his motor car in our next story, shall we? Anyway, that's all from me tonight. I hope you enjoyed that story and I very much look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Good night, sleep well.